This tournament started with 48 of the best players in the world. Now down to our final table of seven, and you couldn't have dreamed of a better lineup. How many jacks and sixes are there in the deck, really? Yes! I don't know where the controversy is. I see a perfect gentleman. Oh, my lord. Oh. If I was Phil Locke, I'd go straight over to the roulette yeah. table right now. Wow! Yay! He you tried to outplay me. I you don't show them you give up and then you That's win. That's right. That's... What about this Yan fight? This guy's got plenty of guns. Uh, Andy Black! That's the best feeling I've had about a hand in ages. Is that sick or what? Wow, Mike Sexton is the man. Pretty sweet. Bodo's in unbelievable shape. It's not a race, it's not a flip. It's a domination. What a final table it's gonna be. Tonight, the final begins, and pride is at stake in this clash at the felt. We have a superb lineup featuring some of the world's greats, including real-life couple Phil Locke and Jennifer Tilly, poker's bad boy Luke Schwartz, and poker Hall of Fame legend Mike Sexton. We're guaranteed boisterous and lively action when cards go in the air. On the final table, we have a tough field. If I can beat them, it's a quarter million dollar and I beat the best players in the world, that would be crazy. I've actually won every heat I've ever played on one of these TV tournaments. So this is like a pretty easy final, I think, so I'm feeling pretty confident. Well, I think my chances are as good as anybody. I really believe I have the most experience of anybody at the table. And hopefully that comes into play here. We shall see. There might be better players than me in the, in the tournament, and I still can win it because poker is so much luck involved. I'll just try and break them down and tune in to the mysterious rhythms of the game. You have to make your own luck. You, it's, you can't count on getting lucky. You have to get in there and make your own luck. I've always been a lucky man, so who knows? Yeah. I mean, right, anyone can win. It's poker. It's time for How exciting yeah. is this? The it's final, a fantastic there. tournament, an That's even more right. fantastic final table. <laughs> now, right. who's going to take charge place. here, Ian? Well, we'd expect Luke to take charge, um, but I've well, got a sneaky okay. feeling this Jan Veit's going to um, break out eight, early five. doors here. Neil, who's got the best seat at the table? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I would probably say uh, Jan, because he doesn't have Andy Black shouting in his ear roll. <laughs> Just come oh. to me, Jesse, if you want any strategic answers. <laughs> That full flush Schwartz has called for. The raise by Bodo and Phil's got the straight draw. Ian, what do you what do you know about Luke's game? I've only played with him once, Jesse. Um, he's you sort of um, think he's going to play how you keep hearing he, he plays, but he don't. I mean, this guy's got the whole he's got the whole game. You know, he, he knows when to lay down and uh, he knows when to apply the pressure. I really like his game. Such a fish, I meant to bet 12,000. Oh, I'm doing. Well, Phil, Phil could have check raised yeah. there. Yeah, seven, and then he to make it well, is he giving Luke just credit or just because it's early on wants to yep. see what develops? Yeah, I wouldn't be keen on a check raise there. I mean, if a seven comes, it ain't that nice a card. That's a nice bet. Yeah, of course it is. That's better than the check race on the flop. <coughs> Phil Locke was very worried because Mike Sexton watched his heat and was commentating on it. So he, you know, Phil thought, oh, well, he knows how I play. I'm going to have to change my game. Yeah, well, that's quite understandable, really. Oh. You know, it's a massive advantage if you can. Half of me wanted that pot to be bigger, but the other half was not wanting it to be like 300 or 400 or something. Turn nine or something. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Phil Locke was very I'm worried because Mike Sexton watched his heat and was commentating on it. So he, you know, Phil thought, oh, well, he knows how I play. I'm going to have to change my game. Yeah, well, that's quite understandable, really. You know, it's a massive advantage if you can. He's not sure, sure how much to make this. Yeah. That's I just made that <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I, uh, 
Whoop. You kids, can't you get anything right? Yeah, yeah that's a I was one of the best. Well, you say 4,000 bubblegum. I'm calling it. Schwartz got off oh. to like a really fast start um, in his heat, <laughs> then lost a whole bunch of chips and then got them back. Yeah, it looks going for an interesting line here. The uh, under the gun yeah. raise from Jan Voight oh. and uh, Luke's immediately just called with Ace Queen. Oh, look at Bodo uh, has also got Ace Queen, wow. so <laughs> this is going to be pretty interesting. Cool. But yeah, well, you could have perhaps expected Luke to re raise there. He has a reputation of being an action player and uh, he just uh, went for the call. I do get the feeling that this is very important to all these players. Anyone get the Ace of Diamonds? Bodo's oh, yeah. got the Ace of Diamonds, but. It's kind of surprising he didn't go for the squeeze play as well, pre-flop. He could have easily uh, bumped it up there with those coins. I think it's because it's early on, Neil. Do you know what I mean? They, they don't want to break out too much. Sure. This is it for Bodo. Case queen and the nuts. Yeah, but four diamonds out yeah. there. He's, he's going to struggle to get much action. So you're not always betting here with Bodo's hand, or you are always betting? Uh, no, I think I'm always checking, actually. Yeah, and me. You can't get two streets out of value out of somebody um, with a, with a jack of diamonds or less. You might just squeeze one bit out of them, and if you're going to get it, you get it on the river. Big smile from Bodo. Off to a good start with that pot. And that'll feel good because he started so slow in both his heat and semi. Yeah, well, I think the semi, he was just so card dead, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, until he hit the bullets against... Our friend sitting next to me here. Well, I don't remember that hair. How'd it go? He was card dead, was he? <laughs> Nobody <laughs> told me he was card dead. He seemed to Cost. raise me a few times for someone that was card dead. I gotta watch this back. Table. He's going straight <laughs> for the metagame. He was completely card dead. Oh. Mar Marvelous. <laughs> for the family. Cool. Now we're gonna start Let's having some fun. Let's play one game nice like a family. Well, you called it, Jesse. I'm not the family guy, so. <laughs> oh, I have to raise. What did he say? I'm not a family guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, and he was a guy, Jan Veit, who I think, I guess with Scott oh, Fishman and all those guys, there was so much talking in the heat. He really never said anything. Um, but maybe he's feeling a lot more relaxed now. Guaranteed cash and the whole thing. Yeah, he, you know, he's got Bodo next to him. They, they obviously been having a a chin wag uh, before they sat down. Bro, that was a genius fault in the commentary box for going off. <laughs> <laughs> I learned it by Andy Black. You yeah, how can you? He's shutting down the action. How can you fold the jack nine there? You can't really, can you? I, I, I'm kind of confused by the whole thing. It's like, um, I think Jan's gone for a, a decent enough raise, 12,000. He might have raised a bit more if he'd have been out of position. He's in position, so he, he doesn't mind it if he gets a caller. I, I'm not in love with the call by Andy Black or by Jennifer Tilly, really, but I guess if they've both called, 000. you can now close the action for 12. I'd probably call with Jack Nine. Andy's flopped an up and down, but it's a paired board, and he's going, going for the bottom end of the straight. And that's now enough for Jan Veit to just kind of slow this down, right? Yeah, I'd love it if he checks here. This would be the play here, definitely. You know, this is one of these situations you're either miles in front or miles behind. If Andy doesn't have an eight, you're very unlikely to get paid anyway. Uh, if he does have an eight, you're really in trouble. So you might as well check. Yeah, totally agree with that. 50,000. Well, he is really now asking the question of Black. Yeah, I was just going to say, you know what Andy's game's like. Well, now, now Jan's giving himself a tough decision. Yeah. It's, it's not just this 50 he's going to have to call. He's got to wonder about what the bet's going to be on the river. If he calls the 50, he's thinking to himself now, and he's probably going to bet somewhere in the region of 140 on the river. And that's basically his tournament gone right there. Ugh, yeah, no, I, I really hate his 50,000 bet. He's left himself in a really tough spot now, and uh, I think he's going to have to fold. I don't think this guy, yeah, I don't think this guy played that at all well, no, you know. No, six, seven, heart. Six, seven, heart. Okay. Oh, <laughs> very good, Mike. Wow, and then he shows it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and that's almost, that's putting somebody in their place. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, and V. You know, when, when you're playing against someone like Andy, you can't, you can't let him have these opportunities to, 
to put you off a pot, so he had to check the, the turn now. Yeah, and Andy's is such a good front runner. I wonder now he's got a lot of chips, whether he's going to really start to dominate the table. It's hard to see him being the first one out. The fact that the, the format is deep stacked means that you've got a lot of play early on, so you can really play poker from the start. I much prefer it, you know? It's a much better game, it lasts longer, and it means there'll be more good hands. Today, I'm in a great mood. I, I just I had a walk around uh, Kensington Park, and I saw this uh, sculpture of Peter Pan, um, you know, the boy who never grew up, yeah? So maybe, you know, we got a lot of people who never grew up playing today. If you're gonna show up, Bluff, get mileage out of it. That's what Andy Black's doing here. I'm not going to Making show any sure everybody no, saw it. Not. I'm not going to bluff anymore. Talking to Mike right now is no, really no, just no. needling. Yeah, that's I only right. showed it because Five Mike said it. You called the hand. You called the hand, Mike? He said six, seven of clubs. Raise here from oh, Phil Lott. I didn't even know. The high end of it, yeah. Bodo with the eights. <laughs> that's a call. Yan doesn't look too I comfortable. I know how tough it is to call over there. I Very good play, bluff. my friend. Very good play. That's why you're Andy Black. Andy Black. <laughs> <laughs> they got history. Poker Who icon. Five. Who made a five? I've got a lot of extra chips here now. <laughs> <laughs> he knows he's got some extra chips. <laughs> <laughs> he's really having a go at this yen fight, isn't he? But uh, you know, it's a final table. I guess you've got to stick it in a little bit. Check. It gives you an edge. Check. Check. Yeah, and even four-handed here, Andy Black's got to know this is a great flop for the old Queen Nine. If he'd been up against a hand like uh, Ace Queen, 14, maybe Four. Phil Lark could have had it, Five. but the others probably wouldn't have been just calling a raise with that. He's got to be Five. happy with this one. How good is Andy Black as a post-flop player? Well, that's a good question, Jesse. I think. Uh, you know, Andy's uh, he's a real chip getter in tournaments. He's one of these people that you look over, he always seems to have chips at some stage. Uh, and a lot of it is because of his aggression. Um, I don't think he's got as good a post-flop game as maybe somebody like Luke Schwartz, who's playing a lot of heads up, generally. How strong would you rate your hand on a scale of one to 10? Anywhere between one and 10, and you can use one and 10. Three. The truth hurts. truth hurts. Is it all right for people to bluff? So if This is going to be an absolutely fantastic yeah, final, don't you think? I mean, now yeah, it's been going already. Um, it's going to go all the way. Yeah. Get it I'm looking forward to some pots with uh, Luke and Andy. I'm just looking forward to seeing more of Luke. I love Luke, actually. I think he's brilliant. I do too. I, I think he plays great. I mean, he. He's played on the edges in his heat, really. I think all the all the stuff, you know, with the abusing people on the internet and being controversial and, you know, being a kind of bad boy of poker, it distracts from the fact that he's actually an excellent, excellent poker well, look player. At for, look at this here for Mike Sexton. <laughs> he's flopped a set of doses. Yeah. 11,000. And this is where you're going to get to see if Luke can get away from a hand. Well, he ain't got much of a hand here. Jesse, there ain't even a diamond out here, you know, to keep him interested. If a king comes, he could be in trouble. Obviously, a six. Raise twenty-five Little min raise. Yeah, I might have just called there if I was Mike. Um, you know, Luke could have been stabbing at it with anything, and yeah. uh, you know, he might not have too much. And uh, as it happens, he hasn't got too much, and he's cool. But uh, on a not too drawy board, I might, I might be happy to give him a free card. Oh, Luke's drawing dead now. 50. Sort of got, wow. Sort of take the, take no prisoners. Okay, your turn to show it if you're bluffing, though. Yeah, bluffing. 
I still have a set, but I had a six, so it's only twos. It's a hard time. That's pretty good, Carl. It was pretty impressive there, the way you put him on the hand, but uh, yeah, kind of makes you wonder why he called the extra bet with the king six. <laughs> He is a great reader of the game, though, Luke. I played with Luke uh, in a lot of cash games where he sat there and just read people's hands all night and called people's cards, and uh, he's, uh, you know, he's pretty good at it. Well, there was, this, there was this great little interplay in the heat between Luke and... Uh, I can't remember what the fe the fella fell on the button. Um, <coughs> he just seemed to always know when he was raising from the button with a hand and when he wasn't. Just, just by the, just by the patterns. I'm not the type of player to be limping, so you no, know, it's a raise, isn't it? Oh, I do everything. <laughs> I want to restrict myself like that. Well, so far, nobody's made a massive hand, except of course the big pot that Andy Black won. That's been the biggest hand of Please significance. Don't hurt me, Luke. I'm a good man. I can't not with this hand. <laughs> Should that take it? Wow, what's Phil up to? Well, it's not the worst flop in the world if you've got a pair of fours. Two low cards from the Razor. You might think uh, the Razor might not really hit the five or six, but uh, yeah. the ace on the turn could uh, could close proceedings if Luke decides to follow through. Okay. Live club. Luke probably deciding not to try and represent the ace because he has some showdown value and uh, he doesn't want to get himself bluffed off a hand that could be winning. I think he's pretty sure he's good now. He's just deciding whether it's worth value betting. You making a bet here, Ian? Yeah, I think so. For something small like that? Yeah, it's seven, eight, nine, anything like that. You're going to get a call, aren't you? You know, only five, six. King Jack. That's good. Was that uber thin or just thin? No, I'm happy. With it. I, I love the way Luke played that hand, actually. He, um, I think checking it on the turn was a very good move. Uh, he doesn't want to get himself bluffed out of the pot and then make it a nice value bet on the river. A lot of people would have missed that value bet on the river. And uh, I, think, I think he correctly figured out he must be winning. Right in the middle, back to the start. Welcome back to the Party Poker World Open 5. The action on the final table continues here at the Palm Beach Casino in London. I think the Luke-Andy dynamic is really interesting, actually, because uh, I think Luke has slightly got under Andy's skin, and although Andy's got quite a few more chips than Luke in these early stages, uh, Luke's going to be on the button when Andy's in the big blind, and we can see some clashes between these two. 5,000's the bet. I only have 14. Yeah. Yeah. That's the plan, isn't it? Yeah. And I have well, they got the same hand, these two. You know, I got here. So Mike looked like know. he's having yeah. just a great time. Really? He's loving this. Well, everyone count your. Yeah, and I like Can Mike's we, call here on the button. It's, it's a bit early to start three yeah. betting. Yeah. And uh, he might think that Luke's at it with a bad yeah. hand, but he could call and, you know, if he flops a flush draw, or, you know, he can make a straight as well. I remember that. Yeah, the stacks are deep, and there's plenty of chances yeah. to win a big pot here. And uh, in this first level, that's the time when you're trying to get in cheap and hit something big. That was the time where you had six, seven of hearts on the wow. eight, eight, nine, or eight. It's uh, a bit of a flop. Sure is. I'm just going to go around the table and find out a minute. And Luke's made an absolutely standard bet that he would have made with pretty much any flop there. And, you know, eight into 13. Mike probably not totally sure where he is he's, he, he probably likes the fact he's flopped an ace he probably doesn't like his kicker too much and he's probably planning on calling two streets here and reevaluating a big bet on the river or does he have to decide now I don't, yeah. I don't think there'll be a massive bet on the river unless there's a heart comes you don't want to repop him here no you won't yeah, Luke's gone for 14, not too greedy, just, um, you know, a smallish bet, and uh, I think Mike's quite right to call. That's a bad card, really, um, well, it's a real action killer. 
I mean, you know, Luke probably was thinking he was behind, right? Okay. And now he probably has Mike on some kind of medium ace. Yeah, exactly. They, he's, he's definitely going to put him on an ace, and uh, it's pretty hard for Mike to fold now. He, and and he, Luke was always going to bet this river card. So. And he's bet it big because it looks like a bet to nothing, right, for him? Yeah, I think you're right, Jesse. I think that's exactly what he's done. He's basically, he's bet more than the pot. Yeah, I can't see Mike really folding this one. He might take a bit no, of time. No, neither can I. He obviously don't like it, but um, you can't pass it, can you? He feels like the best thing that's going to happen is he's going to get his money back, but that's going to happen a large proportion of the time he's feeling, I'm sure. He's got a cool 60, and then they're going to chop 177. So he's going to get... 25. He's yeah. betting 60 to win 25. It's a creative bet he's made here. It has made it quite hard for Mike. I'm sure Mike thinks it's more than 50% chance that it's a split, I and, and he has cool. Yeah, that's what I thought. I knew you did. At least I thought. You made a good bet. <laughs> you know, 100,000 100, you got to fold, didn't it? I thought the 60 was still double pot, right? I think it was the right bet. <laughs> How much yeah. was in the pot, though? No, no. You did it right, yeah. in the pot. I should have bet I 100. I thought you were faster with 100. <laughs> <laughs> I should have bet 100. 60 was the right bet. It was a good 60 bet. 60 was bang on the right yeah. bet. Yeah. Really, you made a good the bet. problem with that hand is you forgot what a genius Sexton was. Well, for me to win this event would be very prestigious because the first day of this event, I was notified that I'm going to be inducted into the Poker Hall of Fame. And so now I feel like I'm sort of carrying the torch for the Hall of Famer. So a little more pressure on me here to perform well uh, because, you know, I want to, you know, do that group proud. Well, the last huge major tournament that I won was the World Series of Poker Tournament of Champions where I won a million dollar first place prize. But going to that final table, Andy Black was also at that final table and he had a huge chip lead. And he sort of melded down and uh, lucky for me that uh, he went through his chips and gave them away to Daniel Negrano and I ended up beating Daniel heads up to win that title, so I like being on the table with Andy. Do you think it's easy to underrate Mike because he seems so solid? He's a great, great player. <laughs> you know, I think he takes the view, when he when he makes a hand, he's going to bet it. No problem with that. Is Andy still up the top there? Yeah, and I mean, Mike, you know, 372,000. This is all going very well. The two guys in trouble right now. <laughs> but really, the one That's guy, Ann Bight. Goodbye, Mr. Bodo. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Bon Bondo, the cat. I wonder if Look, he's racing. <laughs> 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 the cat is angry, you know? I'll but show you cat. I'll show you that. I think Bodo is... <laughs> It's great how comfortable he can remain in the face of all this sort of opposition. I mean, hello. Yeah, and Luke, um, his ace eight not suited. He's uh, he's on the button. Uh, a lot of the players here would probably think, well, maybe they'll just peel in position, take a flop, and see what happens. But ace eight is it's a tricky one because if you hit your ace, you don't really know where you are. And Luke decides that. A lot of the time he's winning here, so he might as well just go and win it pre-flop. This is probably a more kind of internet way to play the hand than some other people might have played it. He's also got this thing going on, Schwartz, doesn't he, where he raises, re-raises enough so that you're pretty suspicious, but not enough so that you always really know that he's at it. You know what I mean? You're, he's just a real thorn, isn't he? And uh, Bodo's that. made a slightly bleh kind of play. He's um, he's decided to peel out of position and uh, what we would call set mining, which is very unpopular among the younger generation. Okay. Trying to uh, trying to flop a set, paying off quite a large proportion of his stack to do so. And uh, quite often in your mind you're thinking, I'm just going to check fold unless I flop a set. And as we know, you you're only going to do it about 12% of the time. So. Um, it's a pretty expensive occupation, set mining. Does that pot win the bet, Ian? 100%, yeah, we know that. Um, Sorry, does that bet win the pot? Yeah.
Luke, I feel I'm so far away from you, you know? I was thinking we were going to get a seat trial where we were... In, yeah, in if you're underestimating bomb, Luke and not I, thinking him as a world-class like player, you're making a mistake. And, uh, you know, against a world-class yeah. player, the same. you don't stack him every time you flop a set. And basically, so if you're going to pay a large proportion of your chips to flop a set, you need to I know you're going to stack the guy quite a lot of the time. I feel like I'm going to live forever when I take my vitamins. If I take my vitamins, whatever, they'll run... Yen's really shut up shop since that ace-king debacle. Do you think he's had a little talking to himself? Yeah, we, we see the but same happen to him in his heat. You know, he, he come out of the traps like Graham. Like um, got a little setback. <laughs> and sat there quiet as a mouse, didn't he, until they got like four-handed, and then he opened up again. Last time Bodo raised, he was re-raised by Schwartz. You know, would Luke kind of re-raise here just for fun? No. I don't think he does anything for fun, Jesse. You know, he's... Well, you know what I mean, to kind of... You know, you push people, don't you? Don't you have to sort of push people a little bit? Instead of saying, how are you doing, all right, they skip the how are you doing part, and they go straight Aggravate, you mean. Aggravate. You know. Let's get to the end at the beginning and get right to the next part. It's like, I like that. Two Americans cross each other the street, and they're like, out of my way. Sexton's in the small blind. They never cross each other the street. They're all in cars. Right. <laughs> you have to go to like San Francisco. It's New York. like they're picking on Bodo just put, a little put, bit. Put traffic. All of them. Hey, what time does this show air? I don't think he's really gotten a blind through yet. My favorite thing about British TV, if it's after right. 10 o'clock, you can say bad words. Naughty right. words get put on the telly. Yeah. When you're in and why would you do this if you're Sexton? Well, I don't know. He's just took a view there. I mean, he, he can't win the pot with a 7-4. He's got no showdown at all there. But um, it's just all about timing, isn't it? You know, he, he's had a look and took a view and decided to give him a little raise, see what happens. It's just like everybody has reckoned that Bodo is just pushing the action a little bit too fast. Or is it? Well, he hasn't really, has he? He raised the first few pots, um, but he's set tight. But... These guys often raise, you know, acey bits. Um, ace jack, ace queen, ace ten. And I don't know. Maybe, maybe he's took a view on that. Join us after the break as the action continues here for the final table of the Party Poker World Open Five. Just, little waves on the table. Phil Locke and the others, well, unaware of the yeah. big uh, bluff no, that Sexton just it, stormed. Yeah. Oh, I wonder who's playing in the next it. three years. Do you think he plays a lot on his own image? Yeah. Mike Sexton, yeah, yeah Mike I, think, Sexton. I think. Yeah, I mean, he, he knows that everyone thinks he's a bit of a rock, and obviously he can exploit that image. And especially like Bodo as his uh, team member. It was also it was one of those things where Bodo hadn't raised for a little while, and quite often someone will sort of think, oh, it's about my turn to raise. I, you know, I, I can get away with one now. And maybe Mike just picked up on that well, and thought Bodo didn't really have it. got the then. aces again. <laughs> <laughs> you read that Joe Navarro stuff, huh? The whole strong means weak. That's exactly what was happening. Damn, Joe Navarro. <laughs> I think I That's interesting that this guy, Joe Navarro, no, is an no. ex-CIA no, agent who wrote a book right. about uh, body language and tells. Uh, I had to school him, I'm sorry. I know Jennifer and Phil are both big fans <laughs> of the book. Jennifer's uh, really studied it. Well, he, so won, yeah. he won the last Maybe she was uh, like giving Phil a bit of that stuff. Anymore. I can't let him do those crafty under-the-gun raises on my big blind. It's gonna hurt. It's going to be so awful playing with Phil because the thing is, we're very competitive. And a lot of times when we're playing in cash games, you know, sometimes if we get involved in really giant pots and then I felt him or he felt me, we both feel really bad. It doesn't feel good to win and it doesn't feel good to lose. So I'd say the best possible scenario is that we play heads up, we get to heads up, me and Phil. And then hopefully Phil will make some brilliant move and I will call and then I'll suck out on him. So I want to win. I def definitely, definitely want to win, but I want Phil to look really good too. So maybe it could be a tie. It would be good if it was a tie. We just split the title between the two of us. Second time she's had the aces tonight. Yeah, she had them twice in her heat as well. But 
had big payoffs in the heat. Yeah, she had the uh, ace eight as well. I'm not yeah, bitter. Right. I'm not bitter though. No, neither am I. <laughs> I, was, I'm, I'm, I was in for two grand with a linger longer. How many times did Sammy George fold the ace eight shorthanded? I think that was the most incredible thing. Do you know what? That was the funniest thing I've seen in all, all the time I've been commentating. Sammy in the background whispering, no ace, no ace, no ace, no ace. <laughs> Schwartz and Sexton, round three, I think. And uh, Sexton's done quite well in these rounds so far. And you'd think he might do quite well on this <laughs> one as well, flop top pair. Probably starting out with way the better of it in the hand department, which he's done every time. Is, uh, yeah, button and small blind. Uh, Luke finding the, uh, the check behind, which is interesting. And I think Mike would have almost certainly bet the turn, apart from the fact that his hand suddenly improved even more. So he's checked again, and I can't believe Luke's going to check behind again. Oh, no, he did. And, uh, well, now he's hit a little something. He might actually pay Mike off here if Mike's not too greedy. Too much? That might be a little bit too much. Maybe 14 or something he'd have got paid. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Luke's called King Queen. He's not far off, is he? It's so hard to put a guy on an exact hand when all that's happened is check, 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 check. Yeah, he's thinking to himself, well, I can beat a busted flush draw. Um, maybe, you know, if he's... Uh, yeah, he's played that. Two pair, and Sexton going very well. Very well indeed. King Queen. Mr. Polka. I thought it was King Queen or Queen Jack Susan. Well, he's opened his game up. Look at this, Schwartz, about where he started. Mike's beat him, oh, I guess three pots. Yeah, a little comment from Luke after that, and he said, I either put you on Queen Jack or King Queen. He said, I can't beat either of them, I still called you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> this final table is burning, running like a live wire. And Neil, do you ever call someone just just to get a line on their play? Uh, no. I sometimes call them just because I don't like them very much. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and uh, Bodo's raised again. He's found the boots. Yeah, and Jennifer's in the pot as well here. It's interesting here because we were talking about uh, set mining earlier. And uh, Luke's decided with a pair of eights he'll just call behind. Look at this. Um, maybe just to try and flop a set. And uh, lo and behold. Now, Bodo's checked to raise, hasn't he? Of course. Yeah, this looks like a pretty dry-ish flop. I mean, obviously, there is a flush draw and a straight draw. Actually, it's not that dry. Um, but uh, he probably thinks nobody really figures to have made two pair here very often, so he doesn't mind going for a check raise. How much trouble if, is he if in? If he gives a free card away, he's not worried. But going to call, I think. How much trouble is he in? I quite like the, the call as well, Neil, one way or the other. Yeah, I mean, now you look at this card, OK, you might say it was a bit of a straightening card, but what kind of hand are you supposed to have here? Uh, maybe 9, 10, but, uh, you know, is that... It's not that likely, is it? I think... Uh, I mean, Bodo's played his hand very deceptive here too, right? Luke, Luke puts him on, you know, peeling off for high cards, doesn't he? Yeah, I mean, what's happened here is that Bodo's really underrepresented his hand, and when you really underrepresent your hand, you have to call the guy because he's much more likely to be bluffing you. And that's uh, that's the problem for Bodo here. I guess 9-10 is a, is a, 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 a draw that got there, and it is, you know, Luke's played his hand consistently with someone that would have 9-10, and that might be worrying Bodo at the moment. I think he has a bad feeling. He knows. He knows also if he calls this, he's liable to have to call another bet on the river. Luke, as we said before, is a world-class player. And he's quite capable of firing three barrels with nothing or with a hand. Wow, well, that saved him. Don't you think? Well, yeah, obviously he's now... He's just called. He said when he was talking there, he said, come on, river card. As if he was on a draw himself. So mm -hmm. I think the 10 might have saved him. Luke would be the kind of guy that... 
he would feel very bad about ch checking down a hand if he can get money on the river, wouldn't he? Yeah, Luke's definitely going to think about making a value, but obviously there's a one card straight there. Uh, there's also a flush out there now. He's got to say, has Bodo played it as if he's got a draw? You got eight nine over there. I'm all in anyway. Oh, there you go. I wow. don't beat that much, but I have the nut blocker. Well, like I say, he pretty much knows that Bodo doesn't have a flush, Ace. and his only worry is he's got a straight. If he makes a small value Ace. bet and gets raised, he's in a messy spot. So he just thinks maybe he thinks if I make a big bet here. I can still get paid by two pair, and I could possibly, possibly get a nine to fold. <coughs> That's crazy. It is a crazy bet. You know, this is a crazy bet with three. When you fold and I show you, you're going to be like, "That's crazy what I did." Would, would, would your bet uh, <laughs> set for value there? Wow! Mm. Wow! He called it. Yeah. No way. <laughs> no way. <laughs> no way. So you have the king high flush or nothing? Yeah. Or just one. Yeah. You see, Bodo's thinking that Luke's oh, a conventional nine. player, and that's wow. perhaps what where he's making a mistake. A conventional player would never value bet a nine really here, nines, but ten because there's too many hands that can beat tomorrow. him. And a conventional Bam. player would never value bet a small flush, and it's impossible really for Luke to have a small flush in this spot. So Bodo's polarized Luke's range to basically the king high flush or nothing because he thinks somebody with two pair a set or a straight would never value bet it's amazing he's never met luke schwartz before force force again no i bet a set for value <laughs> <laughs> i had aces yeah this is yeah that's I strong about folding turn he did as well, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Not many nines in your range. Uh, Sorry? Not many nines in your range, so... This eight, is what... Nine, and I go on eight, so it's unlikely. He loves talking about it, too. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> these guys, you know, that's what makes them great. They love the game. They love talking about it. Check raise the flop. Because he's a genius. I'll tell you, the guy who might have just got put on tilt is Andy Black. Blinds three and six thousand. And... I told if you uh, are I Phil Locke, because I think he's the one the most oh, aware of it. What is the, what is the game I, so plan? How is it going to change right now? But it was him back. A little yeah, more selective, perhaps regain his image. Or? Yeah, I don't think he's been I've doing been anything wrong. You know, he's yeah. been yeah. playing um, the hands as they come, but he just hasn't had any any luck. He hasn't hit any flops, and he's dwindled off quite a few chips. Yeah, Phil likes to play small ball poker, play around the button, and uh, yeah, it just hasn't really worked out for him quite yet. He's run into a few hands. Just calling from the small blind here, Jennifer. Yeah, don't mind that really, myself. Actually, I hate it. Do you? Um, yeah, I mean, she's out of position. She doesn't know where she stands if she hits an ace. Uh, yeah, she knows Andy doesn't really have anything most of the time, and Ace Jack is good. But what's you know what is the plan going forward? You're just going to check call all three streets. Say so she's unlikely to win a big pot with this hand. Well, obviously a good part of the plan would be to try and hit an ace, and uh, that's worked. But and with a king being on the board as well, and now another king, I, I think you know she's. It takes away quite a lot of the. I'm not too sure about my kicker stuff. She's just. I don't think Andy's going to get to too involved here, it, even though he has a pair. He called on the flop, then it comes a seven on the turn, so ten nines there. He he, he could have played a king like this. Ten of hearts comes on the river, which makes the flush and the straight, and then he checks. But I know there's no nines in his range, so I'm still all in. I just and always think, you know, um, as aces. She, if she would have popped that up, he, he's very likely to repop her, isn't he, pre-flop? That's, that's how Andy plays, but... And you are likely to, to get on with him, I think, yeah. sometimes. So you're saying it's okay, it's okay to just be able to win well, a small pot, and that, you know what I mean? You just well, no, I wouldn't like have called. With, I wouldn't have called there in that spot with Ace Jack to win a small pot. Yeah. Be open to to win a bigger one with him. But 
It's that or pass for me. I wouldn't have re-raised him there. I would have either thrown it in the bin or, or just called him. <laughs> she did have kind of an awkward stack size. Yeah, I mean, if she had put like 50 in and he re-popped her, then... You got a pass, haven't you? <laughs> I was just being... I was goofing about... Whoops! So Sexton's raised this. Black's called. And could this ever look like a squeeze? You said, Neil, that she doesn't do this too often without a premium hand. Well, yeah, I mean, she doesn't need to have a hand as strong as two queens. And we know Andy Black has a, I don't know, his hobbies are listed on Wikipedia as calling. So... Um, this ain't a squeeze from this position. It doesn't it? look like a squeeze. I mean, she's got people behind her. Mike Sexton's not the person on the table you'd expect to be opening with no hand a lot of the time. It's not exactly a perfectly She's set up squeeze. Bit. Andy Black's a bit of a caller. Uh, as it happens, he folded this time. But yeah, I think it didn't really look like a squeeze, that one. Oh, you just saw Bound recently? Jennifer. Yeah. I've it seen it before. Really but starting to stack. My favorite part is when she's in the phone. She's on the phone definitely up there in chips, if not on top. Has the cream been rising? Pretty tight between Tilly Schwartz and Sexton. Bodo's in a hole. Can he get out? In case I get curious when um, Andy Black raises Casino me, buzzing he final he table he action here. The World Open 5. And that cash in front of Phil Locke pounds not in play. In his heat, he was offering people money to show him their cards after the hand was over. Information. I think he needs to throw them fivers on the floor then and get some fifties out. <laughs> <laughs> that is what it's worth. And first time, Jan Veit has raised whew, in a while. Cool. You see this? That's not going to stop Andy Black calling him before high, though. Don't worry about that. <laughs> I mean, what's what's this about? Uh, well, probably what it's about is that Andy's looked around Look the this. table and says, I, I quite fancy playing against this Yang guy. Some of these other people are a bit tasty. And uh, I've already bashed this guy up once, so I might as well carry on. Oh, and showed him the bluff as well. Absolutely. 20,000. Yeah, be good. Well, Andy's not folding this one. Obviously, if you call cool raises with 4-3 offsuit, um, you can't start folding when you flop a pair and a draw. Now it's turned into two pair, but it's a horrible <laughs> card for Andy. Um, obviously, we can see that Jan's got an ace in his hand, but I'm sure Andy would have figured out by now that uh, anybody with an ace has just made a straight, and uh, he won't be loving life. Is the standard play for Yan here to fire a bet out or check and get value on the river? No, I think he's got a bet here himself. Yeah, there's two flush draws out there, so uh, I think for that reason he must bet. He's going to look a bit stupid if he uh, doesn't bet and then ends up paying off a flush on the river. And yet the fear of the check these, raise again, right? These two cards here, Jesse, could hit the dealer right in the forehead as they come in. And he's already figured out that the four wasn't a great card. Wow, he's not going to. He, he's decided to... Uh, take it out on his money I think he knows for certain that he's beaten here and he's just calling because he's frustrated with the situation and he's just kind of punishing himself it's interesting I mean I obviously he has a way of winning the pot um, if he's up against an ace you know the board could have paired up the four or the three on the river and he might think to himself well I've got implied odds if I call this bet I can get all his money but yeah hasn't really got enough money for that Wow He's called wow. it! He's called it! Well, yeah, that's, um... <laughs> that probably has to go down as a, an Andy Black blow up. That's just a horrible call. This is what I was saying to you, Neil, earlier, when, with Jennifer, with the ace jack, you know, you've got... You've got to get involved yeah, in these things. I, I, I noticed that I'm always shaking if I play against Andy Black. As I play, played my first live tournament, I got kings on the button and he was in the big line. And I started shaking all over and he made a comment about that. <laughs> it, and today it's, a, it, it's like this again. I always shake if I play against you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what the speech was right now, but I think from Yan V it was thank you very much and I'll... Uh, he said the first live tournament he played, um, 
he was on the button, Andy Black was in the big blind, he had kings. <laughs> and uh, he was shaking so much, he didn't know whether to raise or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I well, know. that was a bit of a body blow. I also hate the way Andy decided to snap call in that hand. I mean, there's no, uh, you know, the, the, it's an ego thing when people do that. They're trying to show the other guy how clever they are uh, and how, you know, it was such an easy call. They didn't need to think about it for one second. These players are playing for a quarter of a million dollars. You're allowed to take time and think about things. And I think if he had have sat down and thought for maybe a minute or something, he might have suddenly figured it out. Um, now, this is quite interesting. Tilly got the best hand, but Black with the draw. She raised him on the flop, which feels a little bit like, I don't know, trying to fend off a saber-toothed tiger with the chair. Yeah, it's tricky, isn't it? Because she has a maid hand that she wants to protect from the multiple draws that are out there. And she's going to think that that 10's a good card for her as well, possibly. Although, obviously, it does pair the top pair. And she checked the turn to call a bet on the river, so he's made a big bet. Yeah. Which may get paid. Yeah, she'll do well to fold this one. She's looking at it thinking I'm getting two and a half to one on my money, and if, if I was good, I'm still good. I guess the key concept is that he called a raise on the flop. Is that the key? That he's got to have something? What could he have? Six, seven, perhaps? the worst thing he could have. I tend to think that when Jennifer takes her time, she's more likely to fold, and if she was going to call, she'd have done it by now. She knows, though, there's a big extra dynamic going on, which is that Andy could easily be steaming, and that's probably what swayed her to call. It was a big dynamic, wasn't it? And maybe... Maybe Andy bluffs there, and maybe he's so aware of his own tendencies that he knows how to use it against other people. Well, well that's a massive hand there for Andy. He's, yeah. you know, he's nicked a few chips back there, and he, he's got time now to settle down. Yeah, and you know that a guy like Andy Black, that is definitely, he's going to put those yes, chips now to good we'll use. Be like we'll be by the sunglasses. <laughs> we can make those well, he was down very low after that pot. He just, he just won 70,000 yeah. back. That's what I'm saying. Oh my God, I didn't realize that pot was so big. I was to bluff the river when I had AI against a genius. Like that, that kind of shot. How, how are the dynamics of the I'm game changed now? I mean, is Yan V, do you think he's going to pop up and start playing a little bit? Uh, I don't think so, only because we're still full table. Yeah, I agree with Ian. I think he, he looks quite relaxed. Everything's going well. He doesn't need to press on too much. I would say Andy Black has the man, the look of a man who may be slightly rattled at the moment. I'm not expecting him to relax, sit back, uh, metaphorically light up a cigarette and uh, just, you know, take his time and play good hands for a while. I, I think he might be uh, slightly steaming. If Luke Schwartz was as mischievous as people have led us to believe, yeah. I would suggest he would, should be starting some conversations with Andy Black right now. <laughs> No, this would be a good time to get the needle in. <laughs> and yeah. he's peeled off a flop against yeah. Sexton. He's certainly been looking to play pots with Sexton, or Sexton's looking to play pots with him. Yeah, and it's, the score at the moment is about 3-0 to Mike, is it, really? Or oh, they did have that split pot that they played that was pretty interesting. But uh, Yeah, I mean, Luke made that great bet, and Mike made a really a super call. Yeah, yes. but I think Mike's pretty well held his own against Luke. I think... I think Luke, if you asked him, he might say that Mike's going to be the tightest player on the table and he fancies having a bit of a crack at him. Well, That's this looks like another 20k going into the Sexton stack. 18. 18. And it doesn't seem like a bad plan, does it? You no, know, the, the ace not. has come down. Nothing much has happened so far. Might as well <laughs> represent it. <coughs> it's quite feasible that Luke could have an ace in this spot. Well, we can see it is because Mike's taking his time to call, but you can guarantee he will call. It's only 18,000. He's getting about three to one. Even if he doesn't like it, he's going to call him. You can have a little look at him first. Just like what you said, when you got a decision like this, you make sure the guy knows you're taking he's, you're taking your time. Wow! Well, there you go. Luke, Luke had it right, obviously. Yeah. Mike Sexton is quite Man. tight. And he fancies he's a good person to nick off of, generally. Wow, it's... I, I don't get I it. I made my hand in the river and I gave it up. Look at him, Lee. He can't help laughing.
with these heats, it's like a shootout table you have to win. And on the final table, you can just ladder up and get some more, more money. So um, I think people play a bit tighter on the final tables, whereas in these shootout heats, they just go for it. Um, I'm going to exploit that, obviously. I'm just going to go for it in this final table, and hopefully it'll work for me. It's quite important to be confident, because um, obviously as well in these, you only get one shot if you go all in and get called and lose, you're out. So you, it just shouldn't, you, you shouldn't want to win too much. It shouldn't mean too much to you. Otherwise, you're just going to be called until you see eights. So I, like in the, in the heat, I was just jamming in least seven, king five, all sorts of rubbish. And uh, that's how I'll do it today as well, hopefully. It's been snakes and ladders so far. Par 300K and four over that mark. Jan Veit praying on Andy Black. Schwartz and Sexton, a little flare and hold in their head. Tilly's still in fine form, but the other three will now have to sharpen their nails or get steel-toed boots. With a mix of tournament stars and top online players, it's a tough final table here. Everyone wants to be champion, and the competition is fierce. Join us next time when our final continues. More people are sent home while others cash big here at the Party Poker World Open 5. You're racing! You're doing that! What are you doing? God, I wish I had the heart to pull the trigger. Come Wow. Yeah, what a work if the night have the kill. I don't mind if you win though, because I like you. The shoes, they're coming back up.